Thank you very much. Welcome. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Marcos. I'm originally from Brazil. Uh, moved to Switzerland 10 years ago to study at ETH Zurich. Uh, and about three years ago we founded Bizu. Um, we're spin off from ETH Zurich. And we founded Bizu with one single mission which is to enable every single employee to take better decisions by empowering them with, with the information that they need at the moment when they need it. So, because we believe that having easy access to information is the single most important factor to influence the quality of your decisions and ultimately the outcome. And, uh, I like to put that in perspective with the value chain for information. So they say data is the new gold, the new oil, and it's indeed one of the biggest drivers of the 21st century. But different than gold or oil, data is not scarce. So for example, I can take a data point like my birthday, 23rd of March, and suddenly you all have the same data. So just multiply data. And, uh, but data only becomes useful when you add context or purpose to it. It becomes information, like you're a friend of mine and you need to know my birthday. <laughs> and once you incorporate that information to your ecosystem, for example, your cognitive systems and link with other information becomes knowledge that you can then use to take decisions and respectively actions that will help you realize the value of that data. For example, when you call me to wish me well on my birthday. And uh, there are basically two ways for you to take better decisions. Either you have better quality data coming in, in that process, or improve the value chain of information to get to the better decisions. And that's the, the, what we aim with Vizu to, to improve that process from data to decisions and to allow you to add more data in very generated terms. But let, let me go a bit more concrete. Let's talk in terms of sales in a company, for example. I think here are the top three challenges in sales identified by research from Salesforce or Milhammer's research group. So one, for example, 66% of time spent in sales are spent on actually non-sales activities like researching new, uh, researching new prospects, um, even, uh, prioritizing leads, uh, internal meetings, or administrative tasks. Then you have 79% of sales and marketing teams are not aligned. Right? They, for example, they do not define together how to uh, choose and prioritize and nurture the leads that they're going to contact. And then 57% of sales teams do not achieve their sales targets by the end of the year. And a large part of the ones that do actually overachieve them already by the half of the year. It's also not good. So when you look deep in the core of these challenges, uh, you see there is an information imbalance. Uh, you see in the middle here pyramid, and on the top you have a few people, the data analytics and IT, which have access to the whole data and information from inside the company, but do not take too many business decisions. And on the bottom of the pyramid, you have the sales managers and advisory team, they're all taking the, the, the decisions in the end, a large part of business decisions, uh, but do not have easy access to all the information. So that means you have a huge amount of valuable information that is not accessible, right? And inaccessible really means you actually spend a lot of time trying to access that information. And then you have, as a consequence also, a huge amount of gut feeling decisions, right? So, uh, sales decision on who to contact that do not leverage the knowledge from the marketing department, that do not leverage the knowledge from the data analytics department. Data analytics have difficulties in pushing uh, their, their knowledge to the front and as a result you have this huge enormous uh, untapped potential that reflects itself as not achieving your targets 
And this problem has been there for a long time, but it's becoming more and more relevant as there is more and more data. And as the data becomes more relevant for competitive advantage, advantage inside a company. So here in the, in the sales aspect, again, uh, how the sales metrics and dimensions evolved from in the beginning, maybe you look only how the, the salesperson would uh, perform on, on revenue terms, so how much did he sell, and then as it developed, suddenly started looking at the sales funnel, how many leads you have in each stage, how is your conversion rate, uh, so more metrics, more KPIs, and then you have uh, more on the activity level, tracking how, how many meetings your salespeople are having, how many calls, emails they send out. So you have more and more metrics, and then suddenly you become uh, uh, more customer-centric, uh, and you add more data about your customer. Um, for example, how he engages with your product, how he engages with your company, how he, um, what are the uh, events in his life, and you have something like an explosion of data that you cannot use because it's just too much, right? You have a, a big uh, exponential leap in the growth of, of data and, and, and sales metrics and dimensions, and at the same time, the, the way to deal with that data did not evolve at the same pace. It's very linear. So first you had like some annual reports or some monthly reports, and then suddenly you had in the company like a static uh, dashboard where you could see main, the, the main KPIs. Uh, and then as it advanced, you got maybe the opportunity to also drill down in those KPIs into a few more. But this does not uh, follow the same evolution in the data. It's, it's mostly linear, so you need a big leap. So how are you going to take this next leap? What, what is going to take you beyond the dashboard? Right? And the answer to that is Vizu. So Vizu takes you beyond the dashboard, uh, puts all the power of data in your hands. Uh, and the way we do that is it uh, provides you first a disruptive way to interact with data through natural language. So you can get any answer you want from the data by asking questions. Uh, and then it answers your questions quickly with an automatically chosen visualization that will help your understanding. Uh, and to support the user, provides also with suggestions on how he can act with that information or at which information he should act, look at, providing him with the full view of that. And we have been working now, for example, with large corporates like AXA, uh, so one of the largest insurers in the world, in Switzerland. Um, and uh, there we have already, we have all 250 agencies from AXA using Vizu, and it's revolutionizing the way people actually interact with data. And I'd like to show you uh, a bit how it looks like with a demo. Uh, so here, for example, you see, uh, imagine I am like the sales uh, manager, I enter now Vizu, and you see here the main KPIs that I have. So as in the traditional dashboard, I can see my KPIs here. I see here, uh, for example, uh, the written premiums in the household, right? And I can go deeper into those premiums, like an interactive dashboard, and follow up and build down into, for example, the employees. Right, so here you see suddenly the, the, how much premiums written we have for each employee and how it compared in the previous the next year. And Visu already detects you here. So what happened in 2019 with Matteo Peclard? And you actually look at it, and you see that Matteo Peclard had a big drop here. So maybe you should look at it, right? And then you see here from Matteo Peclard, and you see there is a big drop and a downward spiral. So maybe it's worth for me as a sales manager to look a bit more into detail on that. So because of the flexibility of natural language, I can simply ask, uh, how about Matthias Declard um, in the analyze, for example, on the, on the channels that he sold. So I look here, the book to, uh, 
And then you see here, okay, premiums, uh, how much is sold. This year, this will suggest here maybe you should compare with 2019. So let's follow here. And you see actually, Matteo Peclar, he does pretty well actually, he did better than last year in overall. Um, but actually what we saw before up there was actually the household insurances only. So let's focus on household only. So let's focus on household. And then suddenly you see here a big, big surprising drop, right, from there to there. And uh, I know uh, as a sales manager, I see, wow, that's actually a big drop in a distributor. And I know that we actually had finished, the, uh, one of our car dealerships had actually canceled the contract with us. Uh, and Matteo was actually relying too much now on this policies from this car dealership. And then this year he had a big drop. So that's something we need to tackle on now. And uh, I should then get a meeting with Matteo to discuss that and see how we can then uh, balance his portfolio to have more household uh, insurances. So he can, I can sit down with him and say, well, let's tackle how we can get more household insurances policies with your clients. Maybe we tackle at the existing clients. So I can simply ask, um, let's see, if you uh for Matteo Peclar on a house route. So I see here very quickly that there are 838 customers from Matteo that do not have, so we can target on this guys. Uh, here's the, actually a list. Uh, 838 is maybe too much. I only need one five to start with. Um, so maybe we focus on the ones that are actually have another policy that's going to be cancelled next month, and I'm going to he's going to need to contact him anyway. So let's focus only on the ones that have a cloud list uh, uh, next to uh, a cloud button. So. Oops. So the expiring him. Well, there is a bit less now. There are 28. Here's the list. Uh, still too many. Let's maybe take the insights and advices from the big analytics and filter only uh, on the ones that have been rated as a client class A. So we will come that. Uh, and then we have here now a list with five customers that is worth contacting. He can, he can then export and then contact those clients. Um, so this is just as a little demo to show you the potential of it. Um, what Visual effectively allows is that sales managers can then lead their teams based on facts and not on opinions. Right? There is no point in discussing opinions when the data shows you the facts, right? So they can focus their one-to-one -one meetings and coaching instead of interrogating to find out what happens. They can see what quickly went in the data. Uh, they can verify in real time hypotheses and explanations and then spot uh, opportunities to improvement with their sales agencies. And on the other hand, the sales agents can then uh, work more effectively to achieve more uh, within a faster time, uh, they can focus better on the opportunities that are more likely to convert. Uh, they, they know how to identify these guys. Uh, Bizu uses crowd intelligence algorithms to identify what works well for the top performance and then push that knowledge also to the, to the other employees. And you can also use it as a way to, for the marketing and data analytics team to push to the front their knowledge. We have proved with ACTS uh, General that uh, we're able to decrease up to 94% of the time spent on self-service reporting, and that's a dramatic increase, and also at the same time increase the amount of information that can be accessed by the front. We, we're working to prove that we can increase by 5% the, the number of the amount of premiums written um, in a company we estimate that in a, say, an insurance organization of about 1,000 people, you can add up to 10 million per year in value uh, by reducing the time, uh, making it more efficient, and by helping them uh, sell more.
So access is one of our main uh, use cases. We have there now roll out to the whole uh, agencies, 250 agencies being used by sales agents and sales managers, agents, general agents, uh, also in the regions uh, to take strategic decisions, but also uh, operationally. And um, yeah, we're also working with other banks and insurances, so working with Basel and um, also with the same purpose, making data more easily accessible. So if you're interested, please uh, contact us. Uh, you can request a demo on our website. Just enter there. If you want to speak with me later, ask questions now, feel free to do it. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.